So I was really happy to have the opportunity to point out that especially green service, yeah. where people are learning environmental values, uh, and environmental skills, uh, 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 retrofitting houses, uh, passing out those uh, complex fluorescent light bulbs, even working on the land, all of those quote-unquote services that those young people are doing are setting them up for green careers later on. So we think that's especially important for people to keep in mind. Well, and amazingly, in all of the turmoil that we have right now economically, the companies that are growing mm -hmm. are the so-called green companies. Right. And uh, from Massachusetts to New Hampshire to Maine to Vermont, uh, particularly uh, Burlington, Vermont, I was noting the other day, they've been creating jobs, right. uh, a couple of thousand new jobs this year alone. Going against where Every other industry is sort of going in the other direction. They're moving forward right. because people do want to weatherize their house. They That's do right. want to do all these efficient things. And, and weatherization is one project that we've looked at in, in our district in Gloucester and Lynn and Salem and Peabody and all the way throughout where it saves money in the long run. Mm -hmm. You know, people are actually saving on their energy bills on that. Uh, it's more comfortable for them in a home, which can get really uncomfortable if you're an older person and you can't afford your heat and you're just not yes. secure in the way you should. Drafts are coming in and out. Uh, and it's an opportunity on the job part because we've been able to train people up who might have been in manufacturing or in construction mm -hmm. uh, or some other trade that they can switch over and do it and, and then they get into that, and he pays reasonably well. That's right. Uh, and gives them the skills they need to keep moving on. Well, well you've been a real leader on this and, 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 and helping people understand it because a lot of times people think about, oh, well, this is just government spending. This is just pork barrel stuff. And what I think your, your leadership has been uh, so clear about is when you're talking about you know, green priorities, uh, you don't just count what you spend. You count what you save. Mm -hmm. The math is different. So when, you know uh, these green dollars are very hard-working dollars in that uh, the same dollar that can be used to cut somebody's energy bill is also cutting greenhouse gas emissions, putting people to work, therefore cutting unemployment, uh, cutting poverty. Uh, if, if we can start use less of our coal-fired power plants to heat and cool these inefficient homes, then we're also bringing down asthma rates. So these are some hard-working dollars, and, and I yeah. think that uh, uh, they're very, very prudent investments, and I think that the more people understand that, and especially on energy efficiency, at the end of the day, it pays for itself. Yeah. I mean, you're literally just giving a little bit of a boost to capture value that otherwise is just going up the chimney and going out the windows because the homes are not properly uh, uh, insulated. So this, this, this is the kind of thinking I think is going to serve us very well uh, going through this recession. If you keep pulling on it, if you keep pulling on the problem, the solutions all start looking the same. Yeah. A green economy strong enough to lift people out of poverty. Yeah, I've been reading a book recently. Somebody put in my hands about the, the 180 days of uh, 82 days, I should say, of uh, Robert Kennedy campaigning yes. the presidency. Whatever you talk about, social justice issues. Would he love this as an issue? Oh my goodness! Uh, not only for the environmental part of it or whatever, but the yeah. idea of taking people uh, that really need a job yes. and being able to train them into something. Uh, it's a bit. I tell people in our district, General Electric. Uh, Sylvania. Uh, these are jobs that really catapult people into the middle class. Yes. You know, your mom or dad got a job with that company. It was a consistent job over time. It paid well. It had benefits and allowed them to let their kids go to school right. beyond where they were able to go to school. You know, whether it was f training or some other uh, profession or whether it was uh, education college. And it created the whole middle class for our district, a good healthy part of our mm -hmm. district. This is what the energy jobs can do That's right. for people. You, they don't get exported. Yes. You know, they're about sustaining here for a long period of time. Right. And they're a set of skills that are transferable, and, uh, and they really prove a value uh, to people on that. So I think we're going to find that it's going to pay off well. I'll tell you, just from a human point, we are what we do. That's right. You know, I mean, I see this all the time with people in my district. I, my own personal experience, my dad got laid off when he was 57 years old mm -hmm. uh, because the, the oil company that he worked at, they sold, told everybody they weren't going to have any layoffs. Within two weeks, they laid off 438 people. Mm -hmm. Clean and, yeah. you know, if you don't have a college degree, you're 57 years old, they can go out and hire some kid to do the books at 22 with a college degree for half the money. That's right. But it personally weighs on people when they lose a the job. You know, a lot yeah. of our self-worth is involved. And so, you know, we have to give people the opportunity to take that, you know, the, yeah. they make them not only feel better about themselves, but take the abilities they have and put it back to work for themselves, their family, and for us. And I think this is just such an incredible opportunity. Well, I think that's right. And the thing about this, this clean energy transformation is the wingspan on these jobs. 
I mean, it really goes from the PhDs to the PhDs. You know, what I mean, it goes all the way to the, you know, the people coming up with the new technology to the people who are who are deploying that technology, skilled laborers, yeah. and the dignity of work, the dignity of labor. Uh, we've gotten to a point now. Everybody should have the right to go to college if they want to. That's mm -hmm. great. But you shouldn't have to go to college to be able to feed your family and, and, li and live a good life and, and set your kids up for success. And yet we created a society where those blue-collar jobs, those, those pathways to prosperity jobs, those, jo those pathways into the middle-class jobs, started getting sent overseas. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to replace them. Right. So now if you're, if you're born into poverty, you're supposed to climb a six-story ladder out of poverty, but the ladder's only got three rungs on it. Uh -huh. you, you, so... This green economy, we can start putting some rungs back on the ladder. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we got to start cheerleading again for the dignity of work. Right. Um, everybody wants to be the boss. Nobody wants to be the worker. Everybody wants to be the, 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 the person who is uh, just thinking up stuff in their mind and I guess you know, little you know, robots are doing all the work. No, They're, we are living right now. We're sitting in a building. It wasn't built by a PhD. It wasn't constructed by a PhD. It was constructed by a skilled worker. Who, whose, whose work will last for generations, and that's what we should be celebrating. Uh, we had a, a person come up and speak to us from Rice University uh, down there in the Baker Institute where they had a team of women who went off and dealt with nanoscience and they think they've developed a way where they can paint on the surface for solar energy. Yeah. Now yeah. if they perfect that, yeah. uh, and what a change if you don't have to put panels on your roof but just go up and layer down yeah. with a paintbrush yeah. uh, a, a substance on that to be able to you collect that energy from the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, batteries, a uh, thing that we've really focused on in this uh, particular bill that came through recently on the recovery a package on that investment. Whoever first decides how they're going to do a battery and have it work so that you can harness the wind mm -hmm. uh, and the solar and all these other types of, and actually retain it, yep. it's going to put that country way in, in the lead. For sure. Uh, so you have everything, as you said, from the manufacturing to the conceptualizing, the yep. engineering of it. Right. And uh, we see it at it, it work all the time in our district and a number of different companies, and I think it can really take off. Well, I think that's right. And the, the thing is that. Uh, we're talking about green careers at the end of the day, right. and uh, so you, where, wherever you start isn't where you, you, you should stop. Uh, but we should we should recognize the dignity of every starting point, and then let people people go on yeah. from there. The other thing I want to say is, that in terms of the health of our country, uh, we cannot. Well, now it's obviously everybody, but we've been saying for a long time we can't go on being the number one economy in the world as the number one consumer, mm -hmm. right? We, we used to be the number one producer. Right. That was why we were respected. That's why we had the strongest economy in the world. Then something happened where we became the number one consumer. Everybody's sending products here, we're sending our money out, and we thought that could go on forever. Well, the reality is it can't go on forever. And now we have an opportunity to produce something again. Yeah. And one of the things we can produce is clean energy yeah. and all the component parts for that. Yeah, look, I have a theory on that. The theory is that at some point we all decided we were going to let our money do the work instead of ourselves do the work. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and when you look at it, That's it was really people good. wanted to be investing and having the money work and the money right. make money. Uh, and everybody thought that was a great thing to get as rich as you could. Sure. And I think a lot of people stopped saying, I want to create something yeah. that provides value that I can be proud of. Right. And I'll just keep doing it for a period of time and make it available for other people and make their lives better. And we sort of got away from that. And I think the president's call uh, in his speech recently was, uh, hey, you know what? I want to get stuff from America. I want America to be the country that does it again, that builds it again, that doesn't give up, mm -hmm. uh, and that adds value to people's lives. And I think we certainly can do it. This is a good starting point. And on the training on that, we, we've got all these ideas of what we want to do right. uh, in terms of clean energy and alternative energies, but we really didn't have a workforce. And I think what's the nice part of, of the Green Jobs Act uh, that you were so helpful with is we need to bring up a workforce so that when these people have the ideas, when they're willing to take the risk as innovators and inventors and make the investment, uh, then they can turn around and say, oh, look, uh, you know, public policy was smart enough to provide us with a whole yeah. core of people that will do everything, as you say, from mm -hmm. the design and the engineering mm -hmm. and the architecture of it all the way down to the manufacturer, mm -hmm. to distribution, sure. uh, and all of that. And so what the bill calls for, essentially, is to make people work collaboratively. Right. You know, you've got to form a partnership, whether you're a labor union or a community college or a private company that trains people to work, or you're the industry itself. You get together in a group and decide how you're going to de determine where the job is at the end of the day, what skill set and education needed to perform that job well, how you're going to deliver it, who's going to do the curriculum. For instance, if you're going to do it at a community college, 
maybe the industry itself is going to provide some of the professors or labor mm -hmm. to do that as, as part of an uh, in-kind contribution towards it. Uh, we'll accept you know, pub, uh, private money that they want to contribute to the program as well on that. And then collectively, uh, you'll have a program so that when somebody goes in, they're not just getting trained and they, or educated to a new uh, project or whatever, Give me a job at the end. That's right. You can train people all day long and then just dump them out and let them sit on the side of the street. Right. But you've got to make that final connection. Our workforce investment boards will be involved in that. Our labor unions will be involved. Our business community is going to be involved. And our educational community is going to be involved. Mm -hmm. And with those kind of partnerships, uh, I think it's, it's definitely going to work well. Uh, and first problem, we got it passed. Second thing was to fund it, right? You know, and we were working on that. We didn't get our spending bills done last year because the president said he would veto them, and so we held off. Right. But that's coming up this week. Sure, sure. We're going to fund green jobs in that, right. and we funded about a half of, of a billion dollars mm -hmm. in green jobs funding uh, in the uh, Recovery and Reinvestment Act on that. Yeah. So that's money that's going to get out in the street and start putting people uh, to work, having the skills that they need. And I'm excited about that. I know Hilda is as well uh, in her new well, post. Uh, well, I, I, it's it's so amazing. Uh, this this story, this Green Jobs Act, is really like the the little engine that could. Uh, I mean, it's, it's such such a kind of a Cinderella story, and uh, you know, it, now it sort of seems obvious. When you and Hilda Solis sat down with this, and, and with obviously the speaker support, mm -hmm. nobody had heard of Green Jobs really. I mean, it, it was it was an educational effort. You had to educate five hundred and thirty. Three other people right. to even understand what 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 it was. Now, of course, every politician in America is a little green jobs, green jobs. But I remember it was only eighteen months ago where you guys were the lonely people on the hill with it, and so to go from that to uh, and having to fight to get one hundred twenty-five million, right. and then have just in the recovery package alone half a billion. Right. I mean, that, that must feel great. It's exciting.